Mr. Steenkamp, you still think of Reba? My lady, every day. Every day of my life, morning, noon, at night, early hours of the morning, I think of her all the time. Mr. Steenkamp, how did this murder affect, affect your life? When you ask me that, uh, um, from that day, it's affected due to myself and my family so much. Um, and it's very difficult to explain, but our lives have just changed completely, yes. Now, if you think of the incident that happened, what do you think of? It's very difficult to to explain it. And you talk about the incident, are you talking about the murder? What happened that day? Yes. I don't wish that on any human being. Finding out what happened, it devastated us. I ended up having a stroke and so many things since then have happened where I've gone to doctors and to surgeons, which I still have to go in for, for my heart and everything like that. It's, I, I just don't wish that on anybody in this whole world. Unfortunately, I have to take you back to the day of the murder. Where were you? I was at work. Then, when I trained the horses, I used to get to work at 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. I got a phone call from June. I couldn't really understand what she was so upset about, screaming and shouting. At first, I thought most probably one of our animals had got killed or so. And she said, come home immediately, come home. Anyway, I dropped everything. And on my way home, I tried to fathom out what she tried to tell me. And then I realized that she mentioned Reva. She says, come home immediately, and Reva's name was there. And that's when I started the panic. <coughs> and then driving home, I realized more and more Reva's been killed. That's, it hit me then. <coughs> that's, it's like it happened yesterday. And that's how I first heard about it. And when you got home? Oh, complete chaos. Thank God we had a, a friend of ours staying at the house. And if he wasn't there, I don't know, a friend of mine, Dave Cox. And he was trying to comfort June. And when we were there, it was just, I, I can't go into the whole thing and tell you exactly how we felt. No. Mr. Steenkamp, is one aspect. Dr. Scholes testified that the family is forgiven Oscar. Just deal with the forgiveness as far as your wife June is concerned. Yes. Um, June is also a Christian. So am I. I don't really go to church, but I'm a Christian. June is forgiven. She feels it's right in her heart to forgive Oscar. But then you must understand, by forgiving like that, it still does not exonerate you from the crime that you committed. So 
he must still understand that he has to pay for that. Yeah. Although June has forgiven him so that she can carry on with, with her life, carry on with a thing that she has started now, the Reva Rebecca Foundation, and let her get on with her life as far as that is concerned. Yes, she has forgotten him, but it doesn't mean that you still being exonerated from any crime that you've committed. How do you feel? It's been very difficult for me, sir. My lady, it's been very difficult for me to forgive. But I feel the same that Oscar has to pay for what he did. He has to pay for it. And I know that's all I can how, say. How should he pay for it? That is up to the courts, my lady. It's up to the court. And we will go by the decision that the court hands down to Oscar. But he has to pay for his crime. And I don't want to say that he must go to the maximum or whatever it is but he has to pay for it.